This is the second video for the Ethics and Legal Considerations part of the Animal Chiropractic class. In this video, we have a general overview of the ethical rules. These are really meant as nothing more than quick reminders to supplement the uh, ethical education you received as part of your professional training. The ethics that apply to animal chiropractic and animal rights in general have changed and are continuing to evolve. Because animal chiropractic exists at the intersection of the veterinary and chiropractic professions, animal chiropractors must work with both professions. Chiropractors must understand that veterinarians have far more training in working with animals. They will have far more knowledge about many issues dealing with the animals and will have far more ability to examine and provide different treatment options for the animals. On the other hand, veterinarians should remember that chiropractors have more knowledge and skill with chiropractic techniques and in communicating about chiropractic and how it may benefit animals. Both professions should understand that taking a class, even this class, that covers a few weekends is not a substitute for the years of training that the other profession receives in their areas of expertise. Historically, the legal system treated animals like a piece of property. And in many ways, the legal system continues to look at animals like a piece of property. But our society values pets like family members. Those pets are important. Their rights are important and they have close relationships with their owners. The expectations of the legal system may be much less stringent than the expectations of our culture. For example, the legal system defines the value of a pet as its fair market value, but owners will spend much more than that market value to care for their pets. The legal system treats animals as a piece of property with a market value that may be very low, but our culture attaches a very high sentimental value to those pets. Ethics requires that animal chiropractors consider the responsibilities to the client, to their peers, to the profession, to public health, and to the animal. Clients create a dynamic that's a little different for chiropractors. Usually when they're treating human patients, the patient and the decision maker are the same person. The person who feels the benefits of chiropractic decides whether to obtain or continue the care. Animal chiropractors must communicate carefully and honestly with their clients and they must respect the client and the client's decisions. Communicating to the client the benefits of chiropractic, showing the client how the animal responds, in discussing alternatives fairly and objectively can help clients make better decisions. Animal chiropractic is a young profession, so the responsibility to peers in the profession is especially important. Most practitioners care very deeply about animals and are very skilled and very ethical. But unlike more established professions, the animal chiropractic profession does not have a strong brand and many members of the public are not aware of animal chiropractic. It would take only a few unscrupulous, greedy, uncaring animal chiropractors to spoil the reputation and the growth of the entire profession. Like other healthcare professionals, animal chiropractors have an obligation to protect public health. They must respond properly when they encounter an animal with a contagious disease, or an animal with dangerous tendencies. And lastly, of course, the primary ethical obligation is to the patient, to the animal. That brings us to the first of the general rules. Decisions should be made based on the patient's best interest. The client and the client's preferences are involved, but the practitioner serves as an advocate for the animal and should first consider the needs of the patient and the patient's best interest to prevent and relieve disease, suffering, or disability, while also minimizing pain or fear. 
Honesty and integrity are indispensable for any profession. Advertising to the public must be honest. Create realistic expectations about both results and expenses. Be honest in describing the training or specialization of the provider. Beyond traditional advertising, animal chiropractors must be honest when speaking in public about animal chiropractic. That includes both formal public presentations and informal communications with members of the public. One of the key duties of any profession is to be certain that clients develop realistic expectations. Clients need to understand what is likely to occur and what the professional is trying to accomplish. Sometimes what is possible is not always what the client hopes for and they need to understand the difference so they make realistic decisions. Honesty with colleagues is also important. Be honest with any other professional who may be supervising the care you provide. Be honest when consulting with colleagues. Be honest about the results of animal chiropractic. Don't exaggerate. Honesty about credentials is important. It's easy to hide behind the doctor title. Animal chiropractors should clearly identify themselves as either a chiropractor or a veterinarian, and they should acknowledge any limitations to their skills or their licensing. Like any other profession, animal chiropractors are expected to provide only care that is necessary. The fee-for-service system creates a strong financial incentive to provide unnecessary care. Doctors must monitor their decisions and consciously avoid the influence of that financial incentive. Make decisions that are best for the patient. The AVMA also has rules to prevent and avoid conflicts of interest that may create more financial incentives for a doctor to provide excessive care. For example, veterinarians cannot offer financial incentives solely for the referral of a patient. Fee splitting and referral fees are prohibited by the AVMA's rules. Confidentiality is also expected. Animal chiropractors should respect the confidentiality of their clients and protect the confidentiality of their records. Sometimes the information may seem trivial or unimportant to the professional, but the client may feel very differently about protecting that information. Generally, confidential information should not be shared unless the client has approved that disclosure. Informed consent from the client is required. The doctor must provide the client with enough information to make an informed decision. Because animal chiropractic is an alternative to traditional care, informed consent is critical. The client must understand that chiropractic is an alternative and understand the traditional care options that might be available. I think informed consent should be viewed as a process that is an ongoing process that in continues throughout the relationship between the professional and the client. A benefit of getting good informed consent is that the client's involvement in control of the decision making can help protect doctors from malpractice claims. Clients who make decisions are less likely to blame the doctor for bad results. Of course, competence is also an obligation. Doctors must obtain the skills and knowledge they need to provide care. For example, a veterinarian should not provide chiropractic care to animals without receiving any training or any education. And chiropractors should not treat animals without training in working with animals. Remember that the professions have different areas of expertise. Veterinarians receive years of training for animals and chiropractors receive years of training on chiropractic. The two professions need to work together and consult with each other and refer patients to each other for the purpose of providing the best possible care for the patient 
in providing the best possible service for the client. Turf wars and professional jealousy need to be monitored and controlled. Uh, of course, fees should be reasonable. Clear communication about fees and creating reasonable expectations can prevent almost all complaints that fees are unreasonable. If the client understands what they are agreeing to and they understand what the fees are likely to be, the client usually will not be upset that the fees are unreasonable. Because professionals are trusted by the public, professionals are held to a higher standard. They're expected to obey the laws and report violations to the appropriate authorities. When we discuss the licensing rules, chiropractors need to be very attentive to those rules and the kind of supervision they should receive when they are treating animals. Animal chiropractors are free to choose their patients and their clients. It's very flattering when someone offers to hire you, but doctors should consider whether they want to work with that client and with that patient. They should consider whether they are the best professional to be working with that client and that patient. Pay attention to any red flags or indicators that this client or patient may not be the best fit for your skills or your practice. On the flip side, once a doctor has freely made that decision to create the veterinary client-patient relationship, the doctor should not abandon their patients. If a doctor is terminating care, the doctor should try to provide the client with notice so the client may make other arrangements for the care of their animal. If the client is terminating care, the doctor may try to make a referral. And if a referral is made, share their records and their knowledge to make any transfer as smooth as possible. Remember, this video is just a quick reminder of some basic rules. I think the two keys to ethics in animal chiropractic are first, making decisions in the patient's best interest, and second, respecting the other profession. Share your expertise for the benefit of the patient.